Today we're going to cut the camshaft lobes using only a lathe. Hey YouTube, what's going on? I'm Greg. Welcome back to my machine shop. Last time we worked on the camshaft for the Wallaby 30cc engine. We made the camshaft blank, which is all of the features on the camshaft with the exception of cutting the lobes. In this episode, we're going to be assembling this fixture here that we're going to use on the lathe to cut those lobes. Now remember, the plans for the Wallaby engine are available free of charge on my website, gregsmachineshop.com, in the download section. Edgar T. Westbury, who designed the engine, wrote a series of articles. One of them is entitled, Why Be Scared of Making Cams? This article is also available on my website. In this article, he describes the fixture that we use to cut the cam lobes. Now for my patrons, I have created a set of dimension drawings for all of the components in the fixture. And this drawing package is available on my Patreon page. I've also put the link to that down below. So you can download this to make the exact fixture that I'm using, which includes the degree wheel and the cutting schedule printed upon it. So that's this here. The camshaft mounts in this fixture and rotates off center in the lathe, turns on center on these pivot points that we put in both ends. And then there's an indicator that's affixed to our camshaft that allows us to rotate the camshaft in the fixture. Then every five degrees is indicated and we make a cut on, on some of the lobes as required by this cutting schedule. Okay, well let's get started, go to the bench, and assemble our fixture. The fixture is pretty simple in its construction. We take the base and then screw one of the ends on using 1032 flathead screws. Then we take the camshaft and install our split bushings on both ends. These allow us to tighten down the retaining screws without marring or hurting the camshaft. Slide that in, put on the other end, again with the 1032 flathead screws. This is the end with the degree wheel. Flathead screws are important because the degree wheel is mounted on top of them. These are the retaining screws. These will be loosened and then re-tightened every time we move the camshaft in the fixture. We affix our degree wheel to the end. Again, we're using flathead screws so they don't interfere with our pointer as it rotates. The pointer goes into the pointer holder and the retaining screw goes in the end. And then the whole assembly is screwed into the end of the camshaft. And that completes the assembly of our camshaft fixture. Let's take a look how we fabricate a few of the key components in our fixture. Got some scrap material here we're going to be using. We're going to start with the indicator holder. Make it from this 3 8 inch drill rod. Put this in the lathe. Face it. Drill and tap this hole. Take it over the mill, drill this hole through, take it out, cut it to length, turn it around in the lathe, turn this down, thread it. Straightforward, right? Let's do it. When I made the ends of the camshaft fixture, I didn't bother making the edges all pretty. The important dimension is the distance between the center of the camshaft and the center line of the lathe. I drill and ream the half inch hole that will hold the camshaft split washer. Then we center drill the hole that will be used to turn the fixture on centers in the lathe. The distance between these two holes determines the flank radius of our camshaft. You can look at the second page of the camshaft drawing where this term is defined. So I've got this mounted in the lathe between centers. 
Now, unfortunately, my lathe is a little too small for this arrangement. You see here, the degree wheel hits my cross slide. So I'm gonna to have to do something a little tricky. I'm gonna to have to mount it backwards. My degree wheel is a little bit harder to see, but this will be totally workable. Now that we've built our fixture, and loaded our camshaft, we're ready to start cutting. Let's talk a little bit of theory. So as mentioned before, the degree wheel is marked every five degrees. So there's 72 ticks or indexes, 360 divided by five. Then we have indications on where we make our cuts on our cam lobe. I also have this chart here that might be easier to see, but it duplicates the information that's on the outside of our de degree wheel. Let's take an example. So what we're gonna do, and what I've done here to make it easier to visualize, is we, we cut the flanks first. So the ones that boundary between the, the cuts and not having a cut, this is a flank cut. So that's on cam lobe one. Can you see that? Cam lobe one. That's one of the flanks. And over here, cam lobe one. This is the other flank. So let's take this one here. Cam lobe one, one flank. Index number 12. Set this here to index number 12. See that right there? This is cam lobe number one. And you can see that, that as this spins, this is cut. So that is that flank is represented by this little X. The other one, index 59, spin this around to 59, which is this little circle here. it presents again the other opposite flank and now you can see between those we have our cam lobe all right so the rest of these cuts here all they all they do is they clear this material behind the cam lobe okay so that's how the index works in our index pointer we set it to a location, lock it down, and then cut the two lobes required. And to make this cut in the lathe, this, our cutter is going to come up to this outside edge here, which is the high point of the cam lobe. And we're going to set the DRO to 968. Then we're going to cut all the way down to 875. These are the two distances from the center of our lathe, okay? So by, by cutting from 968 to 875, that's what I mean when I say make a cut. Okay, so let's go to the lathe and let's cut the two cuts on each lobe that form the flanks. You can see here I've already done it for illustration purposes. But let's see how that works in the lathe. I'll turn it to the number lock it down, make a cut. I'm running the lathe at about 300 RPM using the fine power feed with a parting tool. The parting tool gives me access to the tight spaces in our fixture. And that's our first flank cut. Got our black mark right at the top. So looking at our chart, lobe two, the two flank cuts, Lobe 2, index number 38, and index number 61. Completed the first flank on lobe 3, the second flank on lobe 3. The Sharpie mark confirms we're dead on. Then the first flank on lobe 4, and the second flank on lobe 4. And all of the critical cuts have now been made. We can verify the proper placement of the flanks by measuring the small flat between them. Lobe 2 and 3, located in the middle of the camshaft, should have a flat measuring about 31 thousandths. 
the two outermost exhaust cam lobes should have a flat measuring about 85 thousandths. Now that we've finished the flanks, it's time to remove all the material between the flanks on the back sides of the cam lobes. We do this by making one complete turn of the camshaft, locking it down every five degrees, making a cut on every cam lobe that needs it with the exception of the flanks that we've already cut. Now it's back to the lathe with our index pointer pointing to index zero. We've locked the camshaft down tight with our two retaining screws, cut on lobe two, three, and four, then advance to index one, continue cutting lobe two, three, and four, advance to index two, now only cut lobe two and lobe four. Don't want to cut this flank. Then continue incrementing our camshaft around, cutting every five degrees. So I've completed the cuts at index mark zero. I started the cross slide at nine, six, eight, and moved it inwards to eight, seven, five in five thousandths increments. I will now lock down the cross slide at 875 and won't touch it anymore. I'll increment our index pointer five degrees at a time, cutting the lobes as called out in our cutting schedule. So I've moved my index pointer to index one, and here you can see lobe two, three, and four need to be cut. I've left my DRO 875 on the cross slide and I'll make this cut so we can see how much material we're cutting off each time I'm going to put some black sharpie on lobes 2 and 4 index mark 2 move the index pointer to index number 3 we're going to cut lobes two and four, which jives with our chart here. Two and four. We'll just carry on. I'll cut a few and get back to you. Now watch the material being removed on cam lobe four as we progress around our degree wheel. In small increments, we bring the backside of all of the lobes down to the diameter of our base circle. And there we have it. All of the lathe work is complete on our camshaft. And then to finish the cam, use a combination of the file, some grinding stones, and some wet dry sandpaper. First we want to finish the nose radius by rounding off these little corners, making that a smooth radius there. And then just working down some of the tooling marks to make a nice finish on the all of the lobes. <laughs> well we did it. We cut the lobes on our camshaft for our Wallaby 30cc engine using only a lathe. I still have a little bit of work left on this particular camshaft. I need to polish the lobes a little bit more with my grinding stones and some fine emery. I need to drill the oil holes, one per cam lobe, centered in the back opposite of the lobe itself. I need to cut the end off, and then we're pretty much done, unless you want to harden your camshaft. I'm not going to be hardening mine. This is made out of drill rod and it has forced lubrication, so it's pretty robust. However, if you wanted to, you could heat each lobe to a cherry red and then quench it. You could do each lobe individually. Be sure to drag a file across it when you're done to make sure you didn't anneal one while you were hardening the, its neighbor. Do you still think you can make a camshaft? I don't see any reason why not. I think you should give it a try. All right, I'm Greg. Thanks for visiting me in my machine shop. Until next time, take care.